nice to see you all today in this new session today we are here to learn the textual comprehension grammar and vocabulary of the third unit of the english textbook of 10th standard ssc board telangana and andhra pradesh on to the comprehension first firstly part a the journey answer the following questions we all know in the story the narrator was feeling extremely self conscious to carry his luggage and his father carried the luggage and on the way from his home to the bus stop there are a stream there is a stream of thoughts so that is what this entire lesson is all about on to the first question after spending a leisurely sunday at home the very thought of returning to work on monday is tiring do you agree have you ever felt so yes i agree with the above statement have you ever felt so yes i have felt so many times when the school reopened after the vacations so when the school reopens after the vacations we feel extremely lethargic we don't feel like going to school on to the second question the last sentence of the first paragraph and the first sentence of the second paragraph appear to contradict each other contradict means opposite in their uh, meaning first he does not want to go and later he wants to go contradict means they are opposite in meaning to each other what could be the reason for the change in the decision why did he change his decision at first he did not want to go leaving behind his newly wed wife but when he thought over the responsibilities which increased because of marriage and his debts he decided to go the financial condition could be the reason for the change in the decision so here the financial status at present he doesn't have any money so he has to go to the workplace that is why he has changed the decision on to the third question why did the author get into debt think of some possible reasons we do not know exactly why he got into debt we can just assume we can just presume the things this could have been the possible reasons so here goes the answer this way the author might have got into debt because of his marriage expenses or because of going for frequent shoppings with his wife or spending lavishly at home lavishly means in a very luxurious way uh, buying things which are not necessary which are not so uh, so much important just like that just a way of luxurious uh, lifestyle that is called lavishly on to the next question why was the author reluctant to carry his luggage reluctant means not willing to carry his luggage why was he not willing to carry his own luggage what would you do if you were in the author's place the author was reluctant to carry his own luggage because he felt that if he carried the luggage the whole world would laugh at him now what would you do if you were in the author's place now look at this this is an imaginary clause so for imaginary clause if clauses you know you should use were in the first clause and would in the second clause if i were in the author's place i myself would carry my luggage without expecting any help from anyone so this is how you answer if i were is what denotes it to be an imaginary clause if clause on to the fifth question the author feared that the whole world would laugh at him if he carried the trunk was the fear imaginary or real give reasons for your reason give reasons for your answer the fear was imaginary it was not real no one laughs at us when we do our work it is silly to think that the people are thinking about our looks and appearance everyone is busy in his or her own work 
So it's uh, simply uh, silly to think that others are all uh, looking at us, thinking about us and they would be laughing at us. So uh, it is just an imaginary fear. On to the sixth question. Choose one sentence from the story that best expresses the author's false prestige. Support your answer with details from the story. Now firstly let's choose a sentence which tells that the author had false prestige. Somehow I had the feeling that if I carried the luggage, my father and my people, in fact the whole world would laugh at me and I would be belittled. So this sentence clearly tells that author had a false prestige. That is, it speaks about the author's false prestige. This sentence expresses the author's false prestige. He believes that he had brought a good name for his parents by getting a government job and also that his father would not like to see him carrying a trunk on his back. On to the next question. What does the phrase opposite directions in the last sentence suggest? The phrase opposite directions suggests that both of them are moving towards a different setup of life. The narrator to the luxurious lifestyle and the father to the laborious rural lifestyle. That is at the end when the bus moves we say both are moving in the opposite directions. What does this mean? The father is going to the same uh, rural area, same hilly terrain again going to work hard and the son is going to a city life wherein he, he can have a luxurious uh, lifestyle. On to the eighth question. How was the story told? Were the events narrated in the order in which they had happened? Yes, the story was told in an interesting way with a lot of sentimental and emotional expressions. Were the events narrated in the order? Yes, most of the events were narrated in an order. Here and there we find that the narration has changed its direction. Spot the sentences where the course of narration changed its directions. How effective was it? The sentences which show that the narration has changed its course are Ours is a hilly terrain. Nobody had time for me. Neither of us uttered a word as if we were strangers. These sentences tell us about the inner feelings of the narrator. How effective was it? It was very effective wherein we have an opportunity to reflect on the thoughts of the narrator. On to the next bit. The following ideas belong to certain paragraphs in the story. Identify the paragraphs and put these numbers against them. So we ought to identify from which paragraph these sentences have been picked up. The author enjoyed his married life. This is from the first paragraph. The author tried to convince himself that he had not done anything wrong. This is from the 11th paragraph where he justifies his action. The author was ashamed of making his father carry his uh, trunk. So his pride and self-conscious he speaks about all this stuff. This is in the 10th paragraph. The author looks at himself and his father as two travelers taking two different roads. This is the last paragraph wherein he says the journeys began in two different directions. This is 16th paragraph. On to the next bit. The following statements are false. Correct them. The author offered to carry the trunk for some time. It's incorrect. Uh, the author did not carry the trunk at all. Neither did he want to carry the trunk. So this is an incorrect sentence. The correct sentence is the author did not carry the trunk at all. The second one, the author could decide on whether to allow his father to carry the trunk or not. No, he could not decide. The author was in a confused state whether to allow his father to carry the trunk or not. 
On the third question, the author took unpaid leave. No, the author thought of taking unpaid leave, but he did not take. On to the fourth sentence, the father was not happy with the old shoes his son gave him. No, no, no. The father was extremely happy with the old shoes his son gave him. On to the vocabulary part. Look at these words from the story. Newlywed wife, bus stop, forehead. They are all compound words. So here we see that some of them are uh, hyphenated. Some of them are written open. That is as separate words and some are written as closed ones. That is written solid. That is first one you have the hyphenated one. Second the bus stop is open one. Forehead is closed one where two words are combined to form a single word. Now here we are supposed to find certain words from the text. Pick out all the compound words from the story and group them under the headings as explained above. So I have picked up only five among the each category. You can pick up even more and you can write in the textbook or in your notebook. The open compounds are bus stop, hilly terrain, motorable roads, tribal society, unpaid leave. The hyphenated compounds are Newlywed wife, white collar job, pebble strewn road, homemade wine, self consciousness. And the closed compounds are somehow, anyway, someone, anyone, kilometers. These are closed compounds. You can pick up even more, uh, some more uh, compound words and you can write them down. On to the grammar part. In the story, the author used a past perfect in many sentences. If you observe the following sentences from the story and the rules given under them, you will understand why and how the past perfect is used. It was 10.20, my father had already left. Here, the reason for the usage of past perfect. Past perfect is nothing but had plus V3. Had left is the past perfect tense here. Here, why the past perfect tense has been used? When an action takes place before a point of time in the past, the action is expressed in past perfect tense. That is, now the author is narrating. Before he narrated, this action has taken place. So, it is written in past perfect tense, before a period of time. One point of time is the time when the narrator is narrating. Okay, Before that, whatever action has happened, it has been written in past perfect tense to tell that that action happened before the narration. Finally, we reach Dirang. The bus from Tawang had not yet reached Dirang. When two actions in the past are clearly separated by time, the earlier action is expressed in the past perfect tense. So, two actions are there and they are clearly separated by uh, time. That is, he reached and then the bus had not yet arrived. So, these two are uh, separated by time. Is The bus was supposed to come, it hasn't come so far, right? So, here they are clearly separated by time. That moment, we write the first one in past perfect tense and the second one in past tense. Then, I quickly sat down on a rock. My father laughed at my plight. Both the sentences are in past tense. These two actions are in a simultaneous uh, way. They both are happening in the same time. That time you use past tense. And again, I never met him after I left India. Here the time relation is unambiguous. Unambiguous means not at all confusing. That is you have the word after, you have the word before. So here we have the sequence of time very clearly mentioned. Identify the tense and give reasons for the tense used. Here some sentences are picked up from the text and we are supposed to identify in which sense and what tense is used. I had come home this time round for a special purpose to get married. My parents had arranged my marriage according to the customs of our tribal society. 
here you see had come had arranged both are past perfect tense what's the reason the action completed before the narration before he is narrating this incident the action is already over time flew and 5 months into my marriage i realized it here the word flew and realized both are in past tense so are they simultaneous actions or the time relation is unambiguous that we have to find out here and is there that means both are happening at the same time if you have after before then then you can say the time sense is unambiguous on to the next one but after some dilly dallying i finally decided against it because marriage had increased my responsibilities and i had got into debt here you see i finally decided this is in past tense had increased had got into debt so here he finally decided because something happened before it what happened marriage the marriage had taken place and it had increased his responsibilities and he had got into debt so this is a consequential action you have the second one as a consequence of the first one so here one ha action happened after the other so here the past perfect tense the usage is one action happened after the other on to the next sentence on my way home from the bus stop my trunk had been carried by a porter here you have had been carried so here there is no action which happened before it neither is it a consequence of something so here the reason for the past perfect tense is the action completed before the narration on to the next question or the next sentence a large crowd gathered at our place the day i was to leave people had come to wish me luck so here gathered that's in past tense people had come this is in past perfect tense so a large crowd is a result of people gathering there so one action happened after the other people had come to wish him good luck hence there was a large crowd so one action happened after the other and the sixth one father was quiet for some time he thoughtfully looked at the sun for a moment and then his eyes fell on the can of homemade wine that i was carrying here father was that's in past tense looked that's in past tense and then um, fell this is again in past tense and here you have the word then so this shows that this happened after that so you have the sequence of the event happening one after the other hence the reason for past tense here is the time relation is unambiguous that is there is a clarity in the time relation on to the seventh one i gave him the can of wine he poured himself a mug and handed me the can he drank all of it at one go he then arranged the belt that was attached to the trunk carefully on his forehead here the words gave poured drank arranged all these are in past tense and here you have the word then so this shows that one happened after the other so here the time relation is unambiguous then on to the eighth one i had never got used to physical labor having stayed in hostels right from my childhood had never got so here there is no consequential sequence of any of the events so the past perfect tense used here is because the action happened before the narration on to the ninth one his feet had developed cracks and somehow resembled those of an elephant here feet had developed this is past perfect tense and resembled so here you see that uh, had developed therefore it resembled like that of an elephant so one action happened after the other so here the usage of past perfect tense is in this uh, criteria on to the 10th sentence i noticed this for the first time i hadn't 
noticed that the road was uneven. So here I noticed this for the first time. This is in past tense. I hadn't noticed. So there is no consequence of one after the other. So here it is the action happened before the narration. Actually the action is not happening like I hadn't noticed is there. And then 11th, I checked my wallet and saw I still had around 40 rupees with me. Here the word checked and had both are in past tense. And we do not have any word telling that one happened after the other. So the simultaneous actions, these two are simultaneous actions. On to the next sentence, I then took out my pair of leather shoes from the trunk and noticed my father's face lighting up with contentment. Here the words took, noticed, both are in past tense and we do not have anything telling which happened after what. So both all those, uh, all the events are simultaneous actions. On to the next sentence. I saw that the road we had come by looked like a giant motionless rope. Here the word saw had come. Saw is in past tense, had come is in past perfect tense. So uh, he had come by the road and he saw. So first he had come and after that he saw it. That is one action happened after the other. So this is past perfect tense usage here is because of the sequence one after the other happening. One happening as a result of the other. He stopped his business after he became old. Here the word stopped and became both are past tense. And here after word is used. So we know that he became old. That is the first action. He stopped his business is the next action. So here the time relation is unambiguous. On to the 15th sentence. I never ate Halim before I visited Hyderabad. So here you see the word before. So here we have a clarity about which happened first. That is I visited Hyderabad. Then I ate Halim. So here the time relation is unambiguous. On to part B, another woman. So you know here in this poem we see the uh, domestic violence, the social evil called domestic uh, violence and here we go with the comprehension of this poem. The woman thought of buying a white radish but later on decided against it thinking it an extravagance. Do you think it is an extravagance? Support your answer. No, I don't think it is an extravagance. Radish is not a costly vegetable. Moreover, it is not a matter of luxury or lavishness. It is just a necessity for the nutrition. Then why is a woman thinking it as an extravagance? It's because she doesn't have the freedom to spend the money. On to the next question. What does the phrase mother-in-law's dark look suggest? The phrase mother-in-law's dark look suggests that the mother-in-law is always angry with the daughter-in-law and she treats her with a lot of hatred. She hates her so much. On to the third one. The usual words came and bit. Where did these words come from? Why? The usual words came from the mother-in-law. Why? The mother-in-law did not like the daughter-in-law. So she scolded her and cursed her parents. So this is the reason why she, uh, she always scolded the daughter-in-law. On to the fourth one. Why did the woman crouch on the floor? Crouch means uh, make her body into a smaller size, into an uncomfortable posture. The woman crouched on the floor to get a bit of sympathy in the eyes of the mother-in-law. She wanted to show that she was willing to bear all sort of ill treatment done to her. She wanted to show her loyalty to her mother-in-law. 
On to the fifth question. Why do you think the woman bent her back a little more when her husband came home? Was her husband helpful? Support your answer quoting from the poem. When the husband came home, the woman bent her back a little more as she was frightened of him. Moreover, he did not show any concern for her, so she felt that it was no use looking at him. Was her husband helpful? No, he was not helpful. Support your answer quoting from the poem. The line, nothing gave her the right to speak, shows this. On to the sixth question. What does the phrase as usual suggest? The phrase as usual suggests that the mother-in-law curses her daughter-in-law every day. Or the mother-in-law cursing her daughter-in-law was a part of the daily routine. On to the seventh question. The last line of the first stanza talks about the woman shielding her face from the heat, whereas the last line of the poem talks about people shielding their face from the heat. How are they different? The woman shielding her face from the heat denotes that the woman is trying to protect herself from the anger of her mother-in-law, whereas the people shielding their faces denotes that the people are ignoring the injustices happening in the society. So here, the woman is trying to protect, defend herself from the injustice done to her, whereas the people are trying to ignore, they are neglecting, they can do something for that, but they are ignoring and going away. Because it's not their problem, it is somebody else's problem. So if everyone ignores and goes away, this problem will never have a solution. On to the eighth question. So when the kerosene was thrown, who threw the kerosene? Why? Support your answer quoting from the poem. Probably the woman threw the kerosene on herself and immolated herself because she could not bear the torture of her mother-in-law. The line, it was the only choice she had ever known, shows this. So she made this choice of uh, burning herself. On to the ninth question. What does the title suggest? The title suggests that many women are victims of domestic violence. This woman is one more added to the list of women suffering from ill treatment and verbal abuses. On to the 10th question. Words do not have wings, but the author used them as if they had wings. This is a literary device called personification. Find out the other instances of personification in the poem. You know, personification means giving human qualities to non-human things. The flame is personified and given the quality of beating. So, human beings beat. Flame doesn't beat. So, here the flame is personified as a human. In the line, against its blackened cheek. Here, the pot is personified as a human face. That is, blackened cheek. The a part of the pot which is bulging out is called as a, is termed here as a blackened cheek. So, you know, the cheek is in the human face. So, the pot is personified as a human face. On to the 11th question. In the story, The Journey, the author used the journey as a symbol of life. You will find such symbols in this poem too. Pick them out and talk about them. Another woman symbolizes many women who are victims of domestic violence. Usual words denotes it to be a habitual action. To darken symbolizes the bringing of misfortune. Misfortune means unlucky uh, things that is called misfortune. 
On to the twelfth question. Write a critical appreciation of the poem Another Woman highlighting the social issue it deals with. The poem Another Woman speaks of the social evil domestic violence. This poem depicts the plight of many uneducated women who keep tolerating all the atrocities thinking that it's their fate. It is an eye-opener for each one of us to raise our voice against gender discrimination, dowry system and domestic violence. So this poem really evokes us, inspires us, gives us a spirit that we have to raise our voice against these injustices happening in the society. On to part C. The Never Never Nest. This lesson, the theme is about the installment, the disadvantages of installment, you all know. Yeah, on to the first question. Aunt Jane thought that she had given away 2000 pounds instead of 200 pounds. What made her think so? Actually, Aunt Jane gifted 200 pounds as a gift in the marriage of Jack. Right. So, she was doubting whether she gave 2,000 pounds instead of 200 pounds. Why? What was the reason? Jack said that he had bought all the things. That means he had so many things in his house, so many gadgets in his house. All the things from the money gifted by Aunt Jane. She wondered if she had given 2,000 pounds instead of 200 pounds because it is highly impossible to purchase those many things in just 200 pounds because it's uh, just impossible, next to impossible to get those many things. She was wondering whether by mistake she gave 2,000 pounds instead of 200 pounds. On to the second question. What surprised Aunt Jane most? Why? Jack said that they did not have to pay the rent as the house was theirs. So Aunt Jane thought that the house was so huge so they have to pay a huge money as a rent. But what Jack said, he said that they did not have to pay the rent because it is their own house. So Aunt Jane was shocked. Why? Aunt Jane was shocked to hear this. It was quite difficult for her to believe that they had purchased such a big house. She knows the income of Jack. So it was very much surprising, shocking for her to uh, see. So to hear that. So she was surprised. On to the third question. And the piano and the furniture. What does these questions suggest? These questions suggest that Aunt Jane was in a state of shock. She wanted to find out how many things they had purchased on installment basis. She wanted a confirmation from them whether all the things are on installment or a few of them they had purchased with net cash. That is why she was asking one by one or she was really angry on them for buying so many things on installment basis. On to the fourth question. Would you buy so many things if you were Jack? Why? If I were Jack, I would not buy so many things on installment basis because in case of some health issues or unexpected incidents, it might create a financial crisis. I would just analyze which thing is of utmost necessity and buy it, pay off the bill completely, then go for the next one. So I won't buy everything at a stretch and be in uh, such a peril. On to the fifth question. Who do you think first understood Aunt Jin? Is it Jack or Jill? Substantiate your answer. I think Jill understood Aunt Jin first. Aunt Jin advised to pay off just one of their bills so that one thing at least belonged to them. Jack thought of paying the installment of the car of that month, but Jill thought of paying off the doctor's bill and making the baby her own. So here we see that Jill had completely understood Aunt Jane and she was the one who was obedient to Aunt Jane because she is completely paying off the bill, the hospital bill and making her baby her own. On to the sixth question. 
What would you have done with the 10 pounds if you were Jack or Jill? If I were Jack or Jill, I would pay the doctor's bill and make the baby my own. That is, I am with Jill. Whatever Jill has done is the right thing. On to the seventh question. Did your parents buy anything by an inst easy installment scheme? Do you support or oppose this scheme? Why? Yes, my parents have bought a laptop on installment scheme. Do you support the scheme? Yes, I support this scheme because it gives us an opportunity to use the gadgets in the time of necessity without delay. Moreover, by the time we save money and buy the thing, the situation might change or the opportunity may go out of reach. Here you can, uh, sh you can tell your own opinion. If you are against this, you can write your the answer the other way around. No, I don't support uh, this scheme or I oppose this scheme because it gets us into debts. It makes us uh, uh, very much restless. It, is, uh, it gives us so much of tension. All that also you can uh, write. So it is the place where you express your opinion. On to the eighth question. Write a critical review of the play, The Never Never Nest, bringing out the point of view of the writer. The play, The Never Never Nest, speaks of the disadvantages and the risks involved in buying things on installment basis. It creates an awareness to avoid buying things on EMI schemes unless they are of utmost necessity. It also suggests that it is always right to save the money and buy things rather than buying things on installment basis. So this is what we learn from this uh, uh, story or the play. Hope this session was useful to you in comprehending the lesson. Do let me know your opinion. And if you have any other doubts regarding the uh, compound words or the past perfect tense and past tense, leave the question in the uh, comment section. I would be glad to clarify your doubts. And please subscribe our channel for the other, uh, uh, other textual comprehension. So we are making it in a series. You all know that pretty well for the next uh, unit you will get the notification immediately for that please subscribe our channel and do share with your friends it might be helpful for them thank you for watching and have a great day ahead thank you